It's nine, just gone nine thirty. If you're after the school run, you're very welcome back. And joining us this morning, as promised, our special guest to tell us all her brand new book. It is Trish. Trish Carlos, how are you? Good morning, Willie. How are you? I am very well. Thanks for taking the time out this morning to join us. Thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. Um, you've been on a bit of an adventure, I think, with your brand new book. Small bit of an adventure. Um, not a very short one. It's been a long one. We've been five years getting to this point, but um, it's been definitely worth the journey. It's been a long one, but as I said, it's definitely been worth it. That's it. Ed. Right, is it your first book, yeah? It is my first book, yeah. So I've always wanted to write a book, really, but... Um, I suppose, time. I, I was preoccupied with other things growing up, so um, college and all of that kind of stuff. So when I had my first little boy, Jack, about five years ago, I decided, right, rather than wasting my time up at night feeding, I decided to um, start jotting down some of the ideas in my head. And from there, um, Dare to Believe, the series. So this is the first in it. This book is the first in a series. So Dare to Believe kind of was born. And Saoirse O'Donnell, who was our, our main character, started to grow and she's got wings now and she's <laughs> she's off doing loads of things right so f very good so it's a kind of a mystical folklore yeah so i have i have a massive grow for um irish folklore and all things kind of irish and traditional and things like that so um and i used to love the stories that my grandmother used to tell me about the banshee and pishogs and the puka and all of those kind of things so and there isn't anything kind of modern out there now. So, like, if I was to ask my nieces and nephews who were, you know, in their teens, what a, you know, a banshee or a puka or anything like that was, they wouldn't have a clue. So um, I kind of wanted to revive that part of Irish folklore. And um, at the same time, I wanted to write, you know, I wanted to write a story that people would want to read. So I'm casting it as modern Irish folklore. I'm not sure how the um, purists in Irish folklore will feel about it, but... Um, it's certainly it's certainly a modern and my take on Irish folklore. Right. Well, I, do you know what you're playing your part in keeping the tradition alive? Because yeah, I remember I the, so. the old stories of the banshee and you know the old folklore, the old the fairy rings as well, and not to go into them and all that kind of. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> all those things. So I'm hoping it will kind of bring that. And it, as I said, it's it's modern, so it's set um it's set in the present. So and it's set in um, the locations are really places. So the main setting for the book is in um, my hometown of Cove. So like if you read the book and you come to Cove, you would be able to say, "Oh God, that's where there she lives," or "That's the cathedral that she went into," or you know. So you'd be able to place yourself inside the book if you come and visit the town after you've read it. So, right. Yeah. So it's yeah. real places. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a Harry Potter come tourist. <laughs> tourist attraction I'm hoping I'm hoping I love my hometown Willie um, I love being from Cork I was the Cork Rose in 2006 so I'm always about promoting where I'm from and promoting my county and my hometown and things like that so um, if I can do a little bit for tourism it would be wonderful absolutely wonderful That's but, um, you couldn't yeah. be from a nicer place Cove is a lovely part of the world oh we're just spoiled we're such beautiful um, architecture and everything and then on top of that we're in the middle of that I think it's the second largest harbour natural harbour in the world so we're absolutely spoiled it's a beautiful place to live it is and you know any time I've ever been it's been sunshine you seem to be blessed with this more sun than any other part of Cork <laughs> I don't know people who live in Cove might be a little bit <laughs> might um, <laughs> tend to disagree with you there but no even in the rain it's beautiful even in the rain it's beautiful right so the um that's the setting for the book and that's the picture. Um, I suppose you've always, as you say, been harbouring and wanting to do it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, do you, does it just, do you sit down and write it? Do you have to go looking at archives or how do you research what you do, as they say? Well, I kind of got the idea for the main character and I'm a secondary school teacher. I teach English, so I deal with teenagers every day and I know how kind of, you know, awkward it can be to be a teenager. And I did want to make it a folklore one, so I did a lot of research in terms of Irish folklore. Um, so I got all the difference, like, um, I suppose Irish people were very good at Chinese whispers. <laughs> so when you go to, like, investigate folklore, there's lots of... Um, like word of mouth tales about, you know, this banshee happens here or I heard about this joke. And they can be seen in lots of different things. So 
Um, sometimes a banshee was always seen by any person, and in other cases, it was it was attached to a high king or an important family, or it was attached to a town. Or so we got lots of conflicting ideas of the different types of folklore and the different um, meanings behind different characters and different symbolism. Yeah. But I used that then to kind of create my own. So it's technically, it wasn't actual in the beginning. So I can kind of play it with those facts. So I kind of like I've twisted it and you know, kind of moulded it to suit the story that we have um, in the book, so... I know what you mean, yeah. I was always yeah. led to believe with the Banshee that they only followed the Max and the O's. So I don't know if you've come across that. Um, there was, yeah, exactly. So the Max and the O's were probably, like, you would have had the O'Donnells or the McCarthy's or any of those. So they would have been considered kind of high kings or high families in old, old Irish. So oh, right. that would kind of that would tie into the kind of research I had done on um, on hiking and things like that. That they were important and they they heralded heralded death. So um, they would have known then that perhaps someone was going to come attack them, or you know that there was going to be a battle, or it could be that there was just going to be an illness in the area. So there's lots of different kind of you know different stories for folklore and things like that. So it's been great. It's been great in the sense that I've been able to. I've learned so much in the research for it, and then I've been able to mold that and take little bits out of different research that I found and, and make it a new version of it, I suppose. Very good. I, do you know, I can't wait to get my hands on that. <laughs> it sounds like something I could get lost in. I Well, <laughs> reports say it is. I mean, I'm, um, I've got a couple of friends who've read it, and I know friends are always probably not the best critics, but um, they're blaming me for lack of sleep at the moment because they get a little bit caught up in it and then you realise what time it is so well that um, speaks for itself <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah just um and the good news is that it's only the start of the journey it is this is the first book so the second book is underway at the moment we're nearly finished it and there's a third one and we've left it open as a series rather than saying it was a trilogy because um I don't know, Saoirse is, uh, I think she's a very strong character and the whole, um, I suppose being Irish there's, and an Irish folklore, there's so much, there's so much there that I can work with that um, there possibly could be a fourth or a fifth, but um, we'll get the, this one is out at the moment and we'll, we're, we're working hard on promoting this one oh, and we'll move good. on then. Brilliant. Yeah, if people want to buy it, is it available online or is it just on distribution? So it's um, you can uh, you can order it from my webpage. So it's sent out signed, and for anyone who wants to gift it to someone for Christmas, you can actually order it on the trishcarlis dot com website, and we gift wrap it and sign it now. If you want to um, order it as a gift, um, it's also available on Amazon. So you can buy it in Kindle form or in paperback on Amazon, and you can also purchase it in Middleton Books here in Middleton. And there are two shops in Cove at the moment that are stocking at Lulu's World and Christie's Irish Stories in the Heritage Centre. Right, I, I believe they have a store in Fermoy as well. It might be... They do. They're, yeah, well, I'm a local author from Cove at the moment, so they're stocking it in Cove, but you'd never know after Christmas. I might be I might be more widespread. That's it. I'll request it in the Fermoy one anyway. Hopefully they can get <laughs> it in. I think we're looking for it then. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, um... It's great to have you on and tell, like, telling us all about this, because I know there's listeners in um, in Coleraine up the north, and there's listeners in Galway this morning, and Dublin, oh, Kildare. So uh, there's messages coming in from uh, all corners. So <laughs> Oh, great. Hopefully. Well, for our listeners in the north, Willie, there's a lovely section at the very end of the book where we go to Cushendall and up to Dunley's Castle. So the book ends in the north, um, right up on the edge there where Dunley's Castle falls into the ocean. So that's where it ends. So for any of the northern listeners, there's a lovely there's a lovely journey through the country up to the very, very north of the, the country. So um, there's a little piece for them too. Very cool. That, that sounds fascinating. I tell you, I can't wait to get my hands on that. Um, any outside of the book... Writing you, um, you have a blog as well, do you? That people can. I do. Follow? That's very neglected at the moment, really. It's very neglected. Right. Um, I suppose my 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 life at the moment has been my my work as a teacher, but also um, my the book at the moment. But I do. I write a, a blog called My Love Affair with Bubbles, 
And um, the TrishCarlis.com webpage is also going to be bits and pieces up there about self-publishing and writing up there as well. So um, I'm busy. I keep myself very busy. It's hard to keep everything updated, as I say, but yeah, it's a big project. But we just want to wish you the very best with it and we hope you'll call in again to us and keep us updated. I will, really, and thank you so much for having me on. You're very welcome and we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Um, We'll put the links on, this will be on YouTube after the show, so we'll put the links there for your website under the link on YouTube. Is that okay? Perfect. Thank you, Willie. Really. No problem. Thanks a million. Enjoy the rest Thank of you. your day. You too, Willie. Really. Thank All you. Right, bye. Bye. Bye.